Right. Uh, <clears throat> what I'd like to discuss is a fight uh, over 41 years ago this month. It was a fight that never happened. Um, but two very, very well-known, notorious characters. Paul Sykes, who obviously I went on to do three books, <clears throat> and the more notable to the public, um, the governor, Lenny McLean. Now, this fight was arranged. Um, it was due to take place Finsbury Park. It was a Thursday, um, November the 29th, 1979. Um, Rainbow Theatre Centre um, Yeah um, <clears throat> It was in London It was going to be a big marquee And it was due to take place Over 10 rounds uh, Paul Sykes Had Unsuccessfully fought For the British and the Commonwealth title In the June um, Lenny McLean was at that fight To take a look at him um, in Lenny's book, um, it's not. This is not my opinion, right? But <clears throat> a lot of a lot of the things in Lenny's book don't add up. Um, on, on facts, on I'm looking at facts. But what he said about what he said about Paul Sykes in um, Lenny Mc, Lenny McLean, Pretty Boy. Uh, sorry, the Governor Lenny McLean. Obviously, it was a, a massive, massive seller. It's been a film. It's been a documentary. <clears throat> it was Roy Shaw done Pretty Boy. Sorry, I was getting mixed up there. <clears throat> and it was basically, Lenny said he went, um, he was invited by Alex Dean to take a look at Sykesy. And in his own words, he said he looked like a right con. Obviously, Paul Sykes was what he was. You didn't have to read the small print. Six foot three and a half. Big muscular guy, sort of broken nose, moustache, um, and and Lenny acknowledged that in his book. But what he said in the book, um, I'm not saying was made up by him, but I've got to the bottom of it. <clears throat> he said in the he said Lenny said in his book that the week before um, Sykes had a rook in a pub in Leeds. Which, that much is true. Um, it was against four doormen and he said he'd done them all. It wasn't actually. It was against a, a gentleman called um, Terry Mitchell, who I've met on a, a couple of occasions, a gentleman. Um, even now, Terry's like 68 or something, but he's like, you know, he's like, you, there's an aura about him. It's You get... You can still sense Terry actually wasn't even a fighter. He was like um, he was a rugby player. But when I've been in like when I've been in the places with him, he was very well liked. Everyone wanted to to make an effort to to speak to him, um, and he had that kind of same. Even though he was getting on, um, he had that kind of. You could still sell, you could still see he was really thick set. He had the same kind. Of, I think I put it in a book. Like when you're close to Nigel Ben, if anyone's been close, you can just feel the kind of, you know, Terry Terry was like that. And from my research, you know, there's plenty of people that beat up Paul Sykes. There's plenty of people that took liberties with um, a vulnerable old man, drunk, who um, a gust of wind would have blew over. But the only man who really ever beat Sykes a prime Paul Sykes, <clears throat> certainly on the streets. From what I've, from what I've kind of gathered, was was Terry Mitchell, and that was a week before he was due to to fight Lenny McLean. It was in a pub called the Market Tavern, which is nicknamed. Uh, let me think. It was nicknamed the Madhouse for anyone in Leeds who might remember. So anyway, this was this was about a week before, and Sykes sustained a really terrible cut. So the fight was called off. So Alex Dean, he'd arranged to pay Paul Sykes £500 and basically pay him the rest after they fought. Because bear in mind, you know, Sykes was, 
He'd lost to John L. Gardner. He turned his back on him. Um, it wasn't it, when he fought John L. Gardner. That wasn't his last professional fight. But to be honest, he was never going to recover. He was never going to be taken seriously. Um, <clears throat> you know, it's like I, I went to a boxing show three years ago. Um, who was it? O'Hara Davies against um, Josh Taylor. And when he was kind of taking his punishment, it's the first time I've ever seen that in a professional ring. Obviously, I wasn't born when Paul Sykes fought John Gardner, but he quit. Um, and that's not me having a go at Harry Davies, because a lot of people have said that over the years that he quit. But Harry Davies has come out on YouTube a couple of weeks ago, maybe a month or two back, and he said he did quit. Um, so anyway, Sykes... The story, when he lost to John L. Garden, he said he, it was very tall. He said he was just turning around to his corner to say, can you shut up? Um, he said that to John L. <clears throat> he said that to John L. Gardner in the, um, in the changing rooms afterwards at, at Wembley, where John just basically laughed at him. Um, but he still did put it in his book, Sweet Agony, 10 years later. But the reason was, um, for Lenny McLean and Paul Sykes never happened, was Sykes went out, um, he went out drinking with his old mate Mick Sellers. And to be honest, um, see, I've actually spoken, <clears throat> you know, Paul Sykes is dead and I've spoken to Terry, but I actually spoken to an, an elderly gentleman who, who watched that. Um, he's an elderly Irish gentleman. I spoke to him in a pub in North Allen and he explained for me detail to detail. And uh, Terry, Terry said he'd been to watch Paul Sykes the year before box against um, Dave Wilson, the American, when Paul put him in hospital. He said, so I was aware of Sykes' big, long shots. So he said, what I was going to do, I, I got in close. And um, the elderly gentleman who, who witnessed the fight, he said, he said, no one had even really heard of him before. Um, and he said he absolutely wiped the floor with Sykes. You know, Sykes was a complete mess. So there was no, there was no way he could have fought McLean the week after. Um, the week after. Uh, obviously, that left Alex Steen very red faced. Um, this story Neil Malpass told me. He said, um, "I think I put it in. <coughs> I put it in that book." Uh, Alex Steen gave um, Neil Malpass some money, and he said, "That's for." For beating that bastard Sykes because you know I, I spoken to I spoken to John Spenceley uh you know I spoke to a few people in the boxing world and Paul Sykes would have fought King Kong for the price is right but what you didn't need to do was give him the money or half his fee before so obviously um Sykes you know must have obviously cost Alex Steen Alex Steen Great embarrassment. Um, the, the replacement for the fight, the show still went ahead at um, the Rainbow Centre in Finsbury Park, London. But um, <clears throat> obviously it wasn't it wasn't Paul Sykes. So Lenny Lenny took on um, a gentleman called Kevin Paddock. Uh, how can I put it? Kevin Paddock really... Was um was only really a blown up a middleweight. He'd um yeah he wasn't the biggest, and the outcome was that he beat Lenny McLean over eight rounds on a unanimous decision. Um, Lenny said afterwards, he said he said the reason of my poor display was I'd been training for this big six foot three heavyweight for um. I don't know, 10 weeks, 12 weeks or whatever. And um, so that was that. So, so Kevin Paddock was, became Lenny McLean's sixth loss. Um, yeah, Lenny, just trying to think. He lost six times. He lost, obviously losing to Kevin Paddock, but he also lost on another five occasions. Um, he lost to Roy Shaw in the first fight. With a, with a knockout. So obviously he, he was, it was a technical knockout. And he'd lost to Cliff Fields twice by KO. 
very early on. And he lost to Johnny Waldron very early on, KO. <clears throat> um, so, to, to me, um, you know, these days you've got, you've got, you know, box, Lennox Lewis was 6'5", Anthony Joshua was 6'6", six, six, Deontay Wilder's 6'7", David Price 6'8", Tyson Fury 6'9". They've got Nikolai Valiev, six seven foot two. Back in them days, six foot three was a huge heavyweight, um, and this is why Paul Sykes was paid to be um, when 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 Joe Fraser came over here to fight Joe Bugner in 1973. This was there was nine months from Paul Sykes being out of prison from 17 to 30. So I've dug out a footage. I think there's a round of. Paul Sykes sparring with Joe Fraser. That was at time in um in the Thomas Abeka gym. Um, so you know it Sykes was back in them days, you know, 1978, 79, Lenny McLean was six foot three, Sykes was six foot three. That was as big as heavyweight as 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 there was. Um and he, he put that down, you know, to listen, I don't have an argument if he's if he's training for this big monster um and then a week before he gets you know anyone in boxing knows that um although he was let he was well beat um you know it, it, it could have been a huge distraction where he, he lenny actually said he underestimated kevin paddock and it, it was just an eight round there was only one winner in it um i get asked all the time who would have won? When you look at Lenny McLean, McLean's boxing ability, going back what I've just explained about someone who was absolutely huge at the time, right? <clears throat> you know, you're talking about your Larry Holmes, your Muhammad Ali's. They were all six foot two, six foot three. They didn't come much bigger. So when you watch Lenny McLean's style, he fought almost like um, there's three guards in boxing. There's that. There's that. And there's, you know, for the, the cross guard, which is like your shorter version, which when you, you see the people like Derek Chisora, um, Smoke and Joe Fraser, they did it. And uh, Lenny did this, and I often wondered why. You know, because when you've got, when you're as big as Lenny McLean was, and you've got arms 10 foot long, um, technically, you don't really need to do that, you know. It's, um, you know, anyone, it's... You know, listen, Lenny wasn't, um, he had no amateur background. He wasn't really a, a boxer. Um, he was a brawler. He was a tough, tough man from London. Um, and when he fought Roy Shaw, he was exposed. Because when you look at Lenny McLean's losses, uh, Kevin Paddock, Roy Shaw, Johnny Waldron, in Cliff Cliff Fields, um, they they actually all had like a great pedigree. For anyone who doesn't know, Roy Shaw was an unbeaten pro, ten and zero with eight kills. Um, but he boxed under a, a pseudonym, a different name. Mickey Duff denied it, <clears throat> and um, even Box and Rec have only acknowledged in the last year that you know at the end of the day, if someone's running about Robin Banks, you're not really going to want him. Acknowledged as boxing under the British Boxing Board, the Lord Marcus of Queensbury rules. So this is this is where where it was. Um, so so basically, my opinion was, you know, I get asked all the time because I kind of write true crime books. Listen, I can talk about football all day. Um, I can talk about boxing all day, but you have to be realistic. So so when people are saying to me. Uh, would Lee Duffy have beat Pat Tate? It's utter nonsense. Um, it's slightly embarrassing, and it's impossible and very childish to even to even attempt to to answer questions like that because no one would ever know. You know, where's the form? You know, it's like Man United play Newcastle next week. Well, you can say right there, home form and all this. Um, what I will say on Sykes and Lenny McLean was. Paul Sykes was, um, he boxed as an amateur. <clears throat> he boxed as an amateur under, um, under every level, Northern Counties. He'd represented England. And he actually won, um, 
what was it he won he won a national title in 1961 which was NABC which is called the boys clubs a lot of people know it as the boys clubs so you you're talking about a really a really um schooled pedigreed boxer taking on in my opinion i mean listen my opinion probably doesn't count, count for much but i have had this conversation with john l gardner who um for anyone who knows john l gardner doesn't really have any a nice way to say about paul sykes obviously the, the fort um i also asked this question to neil malpass who fought paul sykes twice and i said what would have happened if Lenny McLean had, had fought Paul Sykes? Um, and both said to me, I'm not exaggerating because I've written the books. Listen, I'm not, you know, I'm not, um, I find Lenny McLean incredibly interesting, um, as do, you know, his books sold millions of copies for, for a reason. He was obviously a monster of a man on the cobbles and maybe unbeatable, but inside a boxing ring, under the Queen, the Lord of Marcus Queensbury rules. Um, when I've watched him, I, I fear I struggle to be impressed with him. And Neil Malpass and both John L. Gardner said to me, um, they said it would have been over two rounds, you know. And basically, what you've got to look at, <clears throat> you've got to look at the facts. And the facts are, you know. Um, only five months before that fight, Paul Sykes had competed for the British and the heavyweight title. Uh, let me think. So that was the that was the June. So this was going to be the November. Um, you know, I went for a meeting a couple of years back with um, the makers of Paul Sykes at large, Roger Greenwood and Nick Lord, and I was with Paul's sister. And this subject must have come up, and it was the same week that um, it was the same week Dillian White fought Anthony Joshua for the British and the Commonwealth titles. Now this was pay per view, so going back over forty one years, um, that gives you a glimpse of how big that fight was. The bookies, um, you know, when he fought, when Paul Sykes fought John L. Gardner, the bookies had Sykes early, Gardner late. I think Gardner was seven, seven to four, and Sykes was eight to thirteen. All the money was going on Sykes. I've read the boxing news report. Um, yeah, I think it was very, very nip and tuck. Um, so. You know, listen, Lenny McLean was an interesting guy. Um, he was a monster at what he did. He was a deck collector. Was he probably the best doorman London's ever had? I couldn't argue with that. It's not something I'm having a great knowledge about. But in my opinion, if Lenny McLean, you know, who was really basically a pub fighter, he was unlicensed. Never ever got a professional license, never had any amateur contests. All he was <clears throat> was a big, rough, strong man. Um, you know, don't get don't get me wrong, if he'd hit you, he'd literally take your head off. But to be a top level fighter, you've got to tick a lot of boxes. And um, you know, a lot of people even like I spoke to many people. Paul Sykes actually sparred with like Leon Spinks. When Leon Spinks fought Muhammad Ali three weeks before that, um, the year before, you know, he'd spat, he'd moved round with Michael Spinks, Thomas, uh, no, sorry, yeah, a young Thomas Hearns, George Foreman, oh, he got a good hiding, um, Richard Dunn, Bunny Johnston. Um, Sykes had mixed it at a lot of, you know, and, and given a lot of really decent, I mean, when you think, of Paul Sykes knocked out Neville Mead. Neville Mead hit Paul Sykes that hard in the third round. He come and done a U-turn. And then Sykes got up, ended the fight. Um, that was obviously, I mean, if anyone wondered um, what my point I'm trying to make here is, 
Neville Mead was like a win Alexander. I think I said it in another video. Out with his 20 wins, he had 18 by a knockout. Thunderous, murderous puncher from, from Wales. Um, and it just goes to show how impressive Sykes' victory over him was. Because in 1979, was it? Sorry, 78, Sykes beat him. Neville Mead came back and won the British title three years after. So if Paul Sykes is beating British champions two years in, sorry, in 1979, um, you know, I've just got to statistically look at the proof on paper. Um, and listen, we all know who's, you know, who's the most famous, who's the most infamous, who's the most notorious, who's the most well-known. Um, oh, Lenny McLean by a million miles. Um, you know, I think Paul Sykes, the story was very... Excuse me. He was very kind of, you know, he'd been dead five years when I'd come along. It'd been very kind of hush hush, and uh, obviously three books later, and we're going to be doing the film next year. We're going to be doing the documentary, and uh, yeah, he's gonna, you know, the story is going to be told now many many years later. Who was this? Who was a strange, violent oddball? Um, you know, and, 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 and for the name and publicity in them circles, Paul Sykes is nowhere near Lenny McLean's stature, if you like, in, you know, millions and millions of copies of his book have, have been out, uh, you know, and listen, I'm not saying if someone said to me, um, Lenny McLean would have wiped the floor with Paul Sykes in 10 seconds on the cobbles, then who am I to argue? I don't have any, you know, I'm not a fighter, never never met either. And you probably could be right. But what I'm talking about is in a in a boxing ring, in a real like a, a Queensbury rules ring, in a gentleman's sport, which is hit, not be hit. You know, people think it's a it's a game for big bruises, which, you know, predominantly it is. But you, there's clever boxers, you know, you can hit and not be hit. Footwork. Um, yeah, and, 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 and I just think, my opinion, Sykes was absolutely levels and levels above Lenny McLean. Uh, I spoke to someone who I won't name, very well known, and he said to me the other week, he said, Lenny, um, Lenny and Sykes were due to f face again. Um, and... Basically, Lenny said, yeah, I'll fight you, but it's bare knuckle. And Sykes said, yeah, okay. Um, and it was a lot of, he'd say, he'd say, he'd go back, go back and forth. Um, but what I will say during that time was Lenny McLean got a lot of criticism, which I put this in my latest book, which I did the research. It was called Sykes Fan Lagony. Um, and there was other people, apart from Paul, C Paul Sykes calling um, Lenny McLean out, people like Dave Pierce. Uh, people like Bartley Gorman, you know, and they were all, um, you know, because when them, when them Roy Shaw and Lenny McLean fights were going off in, in, um, you know, when he, when he was fit, when Roy Shaw was facing, uh, Donny the Bull in 75 and them fights were happening in 77, Sykes didn't even get out, you know, so basically when he get out, he basically give the pros a, get, a go. Um, back in them days, if you'd have fought in an unlicensed, you'd have had your professional license stripped. So I'm not quite sure why Sykes tried to, well, obviously it was money, wasn't it? Um, because obviously after Sykes and McLean fell through, which was September 79, he did fight again for the very last time. And that was in Lagos, um, which Sykes basically, I spoke to someone who was there and he said he kind of looked out in the crowd, almost like Jack in the Shine and like a crazy, you know, like kind of glare. And the first half decent, almost a clip, um, the guy said to me, he said he punched his glove 56 seconds and he just he, he, he just laid down. And, um, and yeah, that was the end of Paul Sykes' boxing career. The year after, he was in Strange Ways. Um... And then the year after that, he got his open master's degree. 
so that was the life of um, a little bit of the life in terms of Paul Sykes. But listen, leave your comments below. Um, you know, I'm not. A, I'm not. I'm not saying I'm a. I'm some kind of Mister Know All. I'm not. I'm just looking at the facts. Um, and the facts were Paul Sykes was going to face Lenny McLean on November the twenty ninth, nineteen seventy nine, Finsbury Park. Um, the Rainbow Theatre in London, over 10 rounds, didn't happen, I've seen the posters, I've seen the build-up, um, I've seen the picture of Sykes and Lenin together, but that was that was a year after that, and um, there was going to be like this kind of hardest storm and kind of thing, Sykes went to prison, obviously he never went in, um, Dennis Nielsen from Swindon, uh, something, Eddie Nielsen went in from Swindon, he's on the picture as well, but um, yeah, I hope I hope I've just give you a little insight to there because a lot of people say, "Oh, Sykes would have meet beat him, and Lenny would have beat him." And uh, uh, I'm just answering it purely from a pugilistic fan's point of view. Um, and I think, you know, looking at the facts, I don't think it was any question at all. My opinion would have been the same as John L. Gardner's and Neil Malpass, who both for Sykes. John Gardner couldn't stand him. He really has no reason to say anything nice about Paul Sykes, but he said, listen, I was around, I'd been in the gyms with Lenny McLean, I'd sparred, you know, he'd been around the London scene. John John Gardner was only from Hackney himself um, when Lenny was from, where's Lenny from? Hoxton? Yeah, so they were both East End boys and um, levels above, uh, and I think my opinion is Paul Sykes would have won um, rather easily within the first two rounds. So keep subscribing, guys. Thank you so much for your interest and support. Um, and keep following the channel. God bless.